We're going to do a video today on replacing an inner steering rod. And what I'm going to use to show the process is my front end vehicle simulator which I built, used it in a couple of videos here, which is basically just to show the idea of how the whole assembly works on a steering rack and the associated parts. So over here this is simulating the steering wheel. As I turn this, this goes up to the actual steering wheel in the vehicle, up in the driver's compartment, steering column attaches to that. So I'm going to turn that, move my camera over here, there's the inner steering rod there, and we can see the outer tie rod end. I'm still turning that over on the other side, turning our steering wheel, and we can see how that assembly all moves and fits together. Here's our outer tie rod end attached to our steering knuckle. It goes there. Got to get past that 2x4. Here's the tie rod, and there's the inner steering rod that we're going to replace. What happens is, I'm just going to turn that again so you can see how that all moves. With that movement in and out, as the steering wheel turns and forces the pressure through the steering rack through that ball joint, which is on the end of the steering rod there, that's what will wear. And when it wears, excuse me, as the this unit moves, there'll be movement between, there'll be play at that part of the joint there. And as I always recommend, you're going to want to have your vehicle maintenance manual for the particular vehicle you're working on handy and reference that for the exact procedure. To clarify this, for the purpose of this video, seeing as how we're using our front end simulator here, we're going to be looking at things from a little different vantage point here, obviously and there's a part of the process that you're going to have to already have done like raising and safely supporting the vehicle obviously the wheel has been removed at this point you'll be looking at your rotor as we are here and we're going to be looking at these components the steering components tie rod end and all the other pieces associated with this job from the top you're going to be looking at it from the bottom of the vehicle. And I might want to mention too, when I've replaced these, it can be a little difficult. So if you can get your vehicle safely supported and a little extra height there to get access to this, it'll help. I put the steering boot back on just to show you what you're going to see when you're under the vehicle. Again, our perspective steering rack here. There's our steering boot, which is protecting our inner steering rod and there's our outer tie rod end. So when you're looking at this steering boot there's going to be two boot clamps. I put uh, tie wraps here just to show where they're at. So you're going to want to release those. They may get destroyed in the process but you might be able to release them and reuse them. I tend to pick up a couple of new ones. They're generally pretty cheap. So they would be at this point on the boot and the other end of the boot down here and this one is actually slip if you slip it away you'll see the notch there on the steering rod that that boot actually fits into and what you want to do before if you're doing this job is to clean off this portion the tie rod there you can see hopefully that that's actually where your wrench is going to fit and you do not want to strip this so get a wire brush or something and clean that off and then as I say you're going to, going to uh, remove these boot clamps so according to the vehicle maintenance manual we loosen the outer tie rod end locking nut which is here 
In the case of this particular vehicle, it's a 19 millimeter wrench, and we're holding the tie rod itself with that wrench. And as we mentioned, we cleaned all that up. So whatever the the uh, maintenance manual for your vehicle tells you the sizes are. So we're holding the tie rod there, loosening this up according to our manual. It says an eighth of a turn, roughly whatever that is. And now that so that's loosened off. That's going to be that could be difficult to do. You fight with it a bit. Should be able to get that loose. So theoretically, we've already loosened our boot clamps, which in our case are going to be these tie wraps here. So we'll just simulate that. We'll pretend that we didn't destroy them and that we were able to loosen them off and move them over the end of the boot. Yeah, it looks like I put my tie wrap a little bit too tight on there for the simulation. So theoretically, that's our boot clamp loosened off there. Now our boot's able to slide. Some vehicles have a nice split boot here so that you could just actually get it off via the clamp on it. But in this case, this boot here, we can't get it off until we've actually released our tie rod end down here. So I've just taken a tie rod wrap and secured this accordion style boot there back out of the way so we can get access to the steering rod here. Now on this particular type of vehicle hopefully you can see this if I zoom in a little bit, little bit there's a locking tab here and that has got to be forced back because it's keeping this end of the steering rod in place. So here's that locking tab on the top Let's see if I can show that right there and on the underside of that steering rod right here. Now I've kind of flattened that out. This is just an old junk steering rack and you can see hopefully that it's flat on this part and up above flat here and that's where you can get your big wrench on. So here we are with the steering rod locking tab been flattened out and now hopefully you can see that that can move so that's moved away from the steering rod itself as I say flattened these areas here away from the steering rod so now that the steering rod uh, has these tabs moved away from it with this locking tab flattened out this can be turned so I took my big wrench and loosen this off as per my manual which was, says one full turn so if I turn that now you can see that you can see that's actually turning there so basically the steering rod is now spinning on the threaded end of the steering rack now earlier in the procedure we had loosened off the locking nut for the outer tie rod end by I think it was an eighth of a turn. This may not be a bad time if you got uh, some of your wife's nail polish, polish just to match mark. Put a little, clean this off a little bit and put a little dab of something to match mark that. Nail polish is good and just paint it on let that dry so that you'll know where that nut was. So again you want to be following the exact procedure in your maintenance manual in mine it now tells me at this point to remove this castle nut from the outer tie rod end. So there's going to be a cotter pin go through here. We straighten that out, pull it out, and then in this case it's a 17 millimeter wrench. Loosen that off. I did a video on removing uh, an outer tie rod end. You could reference that for this procedure if you like because this tie rod end is not going to be just nice and floppy like that it's going to be really tight in there and there's a tool handy dandy tool that will release this different people have different methods for doing it but at any rate at this point in our procedure castle nut comes off we'll pretend we used our removal tool 
and then that pops out <laughs> now it's released from our steering knuckle there's our outer tie rod end. At this point we have our outer tie rod end here as we already did earlier in the video released our locking nut eighth of a turn what you want to do now is spin that outer tie rod end off counting the number of full turns that you're going to take to remove it. So we just did one, two, three. I'm not going to watch you do, make you watch me do this whole thing. And for this particular outer tie rod end, it's 13 turns. 12, 13. That comes off. Now we see our tie rod here, and we're going to take that nut off which you've already match marked so you know where that was I didn't do it because I didn't happen to have any nail polish handy or whatever you're going to match mark that with so then we take that nut off now you can get that boot off of there you slide your boot off and there as we can see is the inner steering rod. So now we can turn that ball socket on the end of this inner steering rod here, turn that right off. And there it is. There's our ball socket steering rod off of it. There's that locking tab we had to flatten out. That'll, that'll turn off of there too. Should be a new one with your new rod. That's how that fits on there. So here's that steering rod locking tab we were talking about, and here's where it came off of. Just to show you how that fits, you see these indentations there that this locking tab fits into. Like so. Oops. Now, if we were doing this in the real world, I would follow my maintenance manual, which would advise cleaning off the steering shaft there and applying a light coat of uh, power steering fluid to it, whatever your maintenance manual advises, and uh, then to uh, put a little um, locking compound in where the, the uh, steering rod ball joint threads in there. And now our procedure tells us to take the new locking tab which of course I don't have because we're just simulating this whole thing and then to take our inner rod and to this would be our new one obviously thread that into the steering rod Now we would tighten this to the specification that the maintenance manual says uh, for the steering rack that this vehicle came off of, they advise 58 foot-pounds. So we'll be tightening this to 58 foot-pounds on the end of the rack. Next thing our procedure recommends us to do is to peen this over, basically bend that uh, locking tab over the flat portion of our end of the steering rod here. And it also advises putting silicone in here. Next step, install the boot. We would have our boot clamps at this point, putting our grooves over our boot 
up on the rack and down on this end here. Next we put our tie rod end lock nut on. So we'll thread that up to where we had match marked it before with whatever it was you used to make your mark nail polish or whatever so there's our lock nut being threaded on there then take our outer tie rod end and thread it on out here and count our turns so I think we said in this case it was 13 so just kind of to wait till it actually threads on there and then start counting. So now that's actually just hit a thread. So one, two, three, you get the idea. At this point, you'll be following your procedure for installing the outer tie rod end. As I say, we're not going into that. I've already done a video on it. Reference your maintenance manual. Basically, you would put your tie rod and castle nut on there to whatever the torque specification is in your book. Put your cotter pin through that. And now that you've got your tie rod end, outer tie rod end back on there, turn to the specific amount of turns. In our case, it was 13. Now you would tighten up that outer tie rod end locking nut right there so again this is just kind of an instructional thing you're going to be looking at your maintenance manual get the exact details for the vehicle in question but now all of our components are basically put back together and as I turn my make believe steering wheel over here we can see everything moving thanks for watching